Hello there folks, uh, this is Pat. Today I'm going to show you how to texture a 3D object in Vectorworks 2020. Uh, this is going to be kind of a long video, but what I'm going to do in YouTube is I'm going to split it up into different, into different chunks. But in this video I'm going to show you a couple different ways to find textures online. Really one main way. And uh, then I will show you how to create the texture in Vectorworks. I'll show, it, show you some different ways how to apply the texture and then once we have it on I will show you how to edit the texture. Uh, I'm going to also have a small section in on uh, Vectorworks 2020 image props. So again this might be a longish video but I'm going to break it down into chunks that you can access individually through a link on the uh, on the YouTube page. So here we go. Uh, first thing we want to do when, when, when we want to uh, texture an object is we need to find, we need to find um, images, find textures. And there are plenty of, plenty of places online where you can find uh, images of pretty much whatever you need. Uh, and, and you're more than welcome to go there. The one thing that I have found uh, is there, there's something called seamless textures. And seamless textures are, are things that people have made that uh, look like... So, so when you put a texture on an object, it has to do something called tiling. And tiling means it's just going to like duplicate itself till it covers the whole thing. And if you do not have a seamless texture, chances are you're going to see like all these little squares of your texture. And that doesn't look the best. Uh, if you can find seamless textures, they they merge together better. And you, you sometimes will still see a line or see something, but it's very, it is very much less than if you have a non-seamless texture. And I found a place that I really think is cool for finding seamless textures. It is a, it is a web page called SketchupTextureClub.com, and you can use it for free. But if you get the quote-unquote professional version, you have access to more and higher quality uh, images. And you may say, oh my god, paid, I can't do that, I can't afford. Well, I think it costs anywhere from $12 to $13, depending on how the, uh, the pound or the euro is to the American dollar. Very much worth it. So I'm just going to scroll down here and uh, let's see if we can find... You know, there's all these, all these cool textures. Um, let's see what we can find here. Textures. And there are um, architecture, materials, natural elements. And when we get into architecture, you know, there's all this stuff here. So uh, there's just, there's just so, so much, so, so much. Uh, and so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a texture for our project today, and I'm gonna let's see I'm gonna find uh, let's see I want to find not bricks I think I want to find stone walls maybe yeah, let's try that we're gonna try stone walls and I think I like this stone wall right oh there's okay so there's stone walls and there's 253 of them. So there are a lot of stone walls here, and I'm going to click, I'm going to do this one right here, and I click on it, and there is a low low, um, low DPI, and there's a high DPI. Uh, for, for today, just for this demo, I'm just going to use the, uh, the low DPI, but the high DPIs, the, they're, they're, they're more uh, cleaner, they're sharper, and they, and they work really, really nicely. So um, I'm going to... So I'm on a Mac and I downloaded it. I'm gonna uh, double click on it and what it's gonna do, it's going to, um, I'm gonna come back to my downloads here. Uh, and let's see, did it download, there we go. And now we have our uh, seamless texture. So I'm, we're gonna leave that there. We're gonna come back and let's see, I'm gonna save this and we're gonna save it again, okay. All right, so so we have a we have an image now. Okay, so now what we are going to do is we are going to um, 
we're, we're, we're going to make a texture. And uh, so what we need to do is we need to come up to our resource manager. Okay, and we need to click on the click on the uh, um, the the open file, our file. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click, and we're going to do new resource and problem. Well, that's the name of my file, new resource. And we're going to look down here, and we're going to find RenderWorks texture. So here we are. So the first thing I want to do is I want to name it, and it really needs to be a very very it, it needs to be its own name you know if if there's something like it vectorworks will call you on it so i'm going to say stone wall one okay so we have all these options and uh in vectorworks and i think in most 3d programs are called shaders how you can give how you can give life to your your texture so what we're going to work on right now more or less is we're going to the color okay so there's all these different options uh, but what we're going to use is we're going to use uh, an image. We're going to use the image that we downloaded. So I click on it. We're going to go find it. Okay, open. And there it is. Now, very rarely do I adjust these. But you can see you can flip it horizontally, flip it vertically. Uh, anything, you, know, you can invert it. You know, that's kind of cool. Uh, and then you can, then you can, Bring it in. So when you click OK, here's our here's our stone pattern. Okay, really really pretty easy. We'll come back to these uh, reflectivity transparency options in a little bit. On occasion, I change some of this down here, but usually I usually I don't. Um, I haven't had a haven't haven't had a problem. So we're going to click on OK, and we have our if we come up here to Resource Manager, here's our texture. So now there's a couple ways to add a texture, and one I believe you can drag and drop. So we're gonna give it a try. Sure enough, it looks like it's gonna do it. And okay, where where is it? Don't worry. Uh, what we have to do is we have to come up and we have to change the um, change the render mode. So if you come over here, you see the little tea, teapot. And I usually do all of my work in OpenGL, so we're going to click on that, and here is our here is our um, our textures. Now you see they're really, really, really small. Okay, so we're going to fix that. Um, you notice that there that these these two little guys did not get their texture because I only dropped it on this object right here. So we can come back and fix that later. Maybe we'll just leave them um, leave them blank or leave them without a texture but what we can do is we can make give them we can give them a color so let's uh, uh sure right here that looks good you know i think i just made the uh i think i just made the default texture pink so we'll make that pink let's rotate this guy around and let's make um okay let's make this guy yeah, purple. All right, here we go. So we can leave it on this side. So now what we need to do is that doesn't look much like a stone wall. I mean, I guess if we, we zoomed in, we can see. And now this is a good this is a good time to look at you know the 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 seamless textures. I think if you look really close, you can kind of see that. Okay, knowing what you know, you can see how you know here's a texture, here's a texture, here's a texture, but it really blends together really nicely so now but what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to zoom out just a little bit and we're going to edit it so what we need to do is click on the object we're going to edit and we come up here to our object info palette and most of the work we've been doing now has all been in shape now we're going to come over here to render and there's a whole new world of things to adjust and make awesome so here we see that we have our our um texture now the way I showed you was to drag and drop a texture um, another thing you can do is you can come here and you can click on texture and if there are more textures in this drawing it'll show you and you can select one okay but right now we only have this one so the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna make this just a touch bigger here is uh, we're gonna we're gonna resize the resize the texture and over here you can start 
dragging this and you can see how you can make it bigger so with the slider I can only go up to 11 uh, insert spinal tap joke it only goes to 11 uh, <laughs> uh, but what we can we can make it we can make it bigger if we'd like I'm gonna type in 50 holy Moses okay those are big stones so we're gonna go back we're gonna go back uh, let's go back to somewhere in here okay we like this so here is uh, my daughter's uh, college bill why I'm doing this um, okay what we want to do now is so 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 we can look at this and here's our here's our texture but I want I want the the, the rocks the stone wall to go horizontal so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this again, okay, and I'm going to come down and you can you can rotate it. So you can rotate it any way you want, but I'm just going to come in and I'm going to type 90, okay. Um, so here is our stone wall. Now we can repeat horizontally, repeat vertically. That is our texture right there. So this is the tiling I was talking about. We can flip things, you know, to make it look flip horizontal, flip vertical, do a lot of things. So uh, the, the other thing that I'm going to show you is something called map type. When you apply a texture to an object, uh, technically you're, it's called you're mapping a texture to it. So most of the times if you do square, rectangular, things with sharp edges, you're going to use the perimeter method. But there are all these different methods. There's cylinder, there's sphere, and if you have those objects, they're they're better to better to use. But try it out, and you may like it. Whoa! It looks like my shirt from fourth grade, minus the stones. Uh, so all right, that could be cool. We're gonna go back to perimeter. Oh, and it changed uh, the uh, changed the rotation. We can fix that now. Let's try sphere. Kind of the same thing, but if you but again, if you if you have those objects, it'll make them look better. So we're going to come back to perimeter. We're going to change rotation to 90, and here we are. So let's zoom around here. What if we want now? There there might be a time, especially in theater if we have um, a wall or we have an object or we have something that you know we want to have the front one texture the back the other texture okay so what what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new we're gonna create a new texture and then we're gonna apply it to just one side so we're gonna come back again to to our textures our resource manager and we're gonna click again new resource and we're going to click on renderworks texture now what we're going to do is we're going to call this one brick wall one and now I'm going to click on this and now down here there are these there are these these guys right here brick glass noise pavement and tiles these are called procedural textures and they are textures that are built right in they look a little cartoony but you can but you can edit them and you can change them to make them look a little a little closer I mean sometimes you may want a realistic brick texture if you want a more again again the word I use is cartoony I'm not sure if that's right so we're gonna click on bricks and here's our here's our here's our bricks and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit it and it gives you all these different things we're gonna um, we're gonna edit the brick colors and again I'm gonna change I'm gonna make these like really really crazy colors so they pop out okay that's one color okay now we're gonna make uh, no let's do let's do that or we could use an image again uh, but then these are all the different different things you can change like right now this looks like this brick is about a two two to one okay and it fits really nicely for particular patterns but if you wanted it different, if you wanted to make them square, you could go 0.46, and now they're going to be 
now they're square you can make a lot of you can make a lot of change you can uh, change the gaps you can change the the color of the of it um, and yeah it's kind of it's kind of neat so we're gonna click on OK and we're gonna click on OK and we're gonna have our um, now we're gonna have our our other texture here so now what we have to do because we want now we want to put those bricks on on the front of this on the front of this wall here okay and we have to do a little bit of uh, we have to do a little bit of um, adjustments so what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave this object selected and what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to the 3d uh, 3d tools and the one thing we're going to look for is we're going to look for extract right there. And now what we're going to do is we want to, you can ex extract different things up here in the mode bar. We want to extract a face. So now we can select any face we want. Now I'm going to click on this face and I'm going to click OK. And now what we did was we have we have a surface here, a NURBS surface that kind of is, works, it kind of does its own thing now, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just undo so it's back sitting on top of it. And the thing that, if you can see, you can see the other pattern through this because what it does is it actually just makes a, makes a plane and sticks it right on the front of the other, of the other object. And sometimes it's so close that some, you can start to see through it almost. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top view, okay, and I'm just going to use my use my shift and arrows, and I'm just going to nudge it down like one pixel, okay, just a tiny bit, and we're going to come back to our view, and now you you don't see that anymore. So now again we can just come back to our our textures, texture. There's another brick in the wall, and we're going to do perimeter. We're going to do scale. We can do all the other things, uh, rotation. Nope. And uh, there you have it. There is, um, and all it is. Uh, in pre in previous versions, I think it the, it it like des destroyed the object. But now all it does is it makes this makes this nerve surface, and you can still play around with the, the the main object, which is which is pretty neat. So, in a nutshell, that is um, how to apply textures. It's really not hard. There's a there there are more more things that we can do to tweak it, but but for now, this is a good starting place for anybody that's learning how to texture. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you how to do is to um, use an image prop. And if you've never used an image prop, uh, they are they are pretty neat. But before we do our image prop, we need to download some more images. Um, usually, I use image prop. How I use image props is if I have like a painting on a wall, if I have foliage, if I have a um, Image props are great ways to put trees into your model, uh, but for me, and if you and if you are um, a theater folk, when you create models or when you create um, elevations, you always want to have a person in your in your drawing to give uh, to give some sense of scale. So that's what I'm going to do. That's what we're going to do uh, now. So. I'm going to, I, I found a, I found an image, I found a person, um, and let's, uh, let's start making an image prop. Uh, so we go to model, create image prop, say, so we have to import the image, okay, so we're going to click on okay, we're going to find our, where is it, it's right here, okay, now, uh, we have a we have to do some things so now we're going to do um, person standing and here you can you can keep the abs, uh, aspect ratio locked and you can have something in 
you, you, you can make it to whatever size you'd like. Usually you'd like to keep the aspect ratio locked so it doesn't make it look wonky and sort of misshapen. Uh, we're going to do no mask for right now. Uh, crossed planes. What that is, is if there, I've seen cross planes work best for trees and bushes. So what it will do is it will take your image prop and it will put it in and it will put it will copy another one, put it in at 90 degrees. So when you rotate your models, it kind of looks like a real tree. Um, constant reflectivity. I usually leave that set because then uh, depending on what the lighting is, you can still see your you can still see your image prop. Uh, create a plug an object. So if if you uh, need any of these things here, create a symbol or if you auto rotate to viewer. So if you have auto rotate to viewer on, no matter how you look at your model, the, the image prop will always be facing you. And I very rarely do that because I just want the, want the, the image props to stay where they we are. So we're going to turn that off and we're going to click on OK. And holy Moses, what do we got here? Here we have our our image prop. OK, so here we have a person, but that's not um, I'm not digging that. OK, he's too big and he's too green and too funky here. So we're going to we're I'm going to I'm going to undo. I'm going to back out. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna take another run at this. So I'm gonna undo, undo, undo. Okay. And um, let's see. So we're gonna come back and we're gonna create image prop again. We're gonna do model, create image prop. We're gonna import our file. We're gonna do this guy here, uh, right there. And now we're gonna do let's do person standing one okay and he was pretty big so let's let's try making him I I want to make him in scale with this I want to pretend this is a big wall so what you know I I could scale the object I could scale the the um, the the image prop I'm just gonna scale the image prop and let's sh shoot for one foot now just for grins this time we're gonna use something called a mask okay because a lot of times when you download a file there's like of, of say a person standing or a painting there's all this stuff in the background and usually what I have to do when I find a, an image prop that I really like it's usually a person standing with a bunch of other people and there's all this junk in here that I don't want so you have to do a little work and you need to have some form of image editor to do that no I use I use um, Adobe Creative Cloud and I uh, use Photoshop, but there are a lot of other really good free image editing programs that you can do this. And what we want to do is we want to uh, we want to erase all the background and replace the background with a solid color. And when you choose a solid color, you want to make sure it isn't a color that the person has on them in their clothes or something in their skin tone. Think of it as you're putting a green screen behind the person. That's what you're that's what you're doing. So, but as long as it's one solid color, you're going to be okay. So, what we're going to do is the, the 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 image that I downloaded has kind of like a cream background. I think that should work pretty well. So, we're going to use mask and uh, we're going to click on OK. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Create mask. And okay, we're going to get our image file again. Okay, we're right there. All right. Now we're going to use transparent color. So now um, we want. Well, for some that that's that's really weird. Uh, the image here. Let me show you the image that I that I downloaded. Uh, online, it looked like it had. Yeah, it has this. It has this clear you know plain background on it but it must not have uh, must not have liked that so we'll we'll I think you're gonna be able to see even though it's gonna look a little wonky when we're done but what I want to do is you select the, tra the, the transparent color so uh, when you select the transparent color that's what's gonna be transparent so anything that is black is going to be transparent and so I'm gonna try 
Oh, that looks. We're gonna try. Let's try that. You can adjust it just a little bit. So we're gonna click on OK, and we're gonna keep uh, everything the same way. Let's click OK and see what happens. And already we're better. So here is our here is our person. So you can kind of see. Uh, you can I think you can get the gist of what's what's going on okay you know so we, we picked that transparent color and now everything is uh, everything is transparent so now what we can do is we can come back to our our shape and we can change uh, the height so let's say let's say we want this person to be seven inches tall oh no that's a little too small it's a big wall let's let's say 10 okay so here again we have our person standing uh, standing in but next to the wall so let's just try and see what crossed planes looks like so now see even though it doesn't have auto rotate on it looks like it's um it's it you you can always see the person sort of so i'm going to uncheck that and i'm going to check auto rotate now you see how the person is always rotates facing and for some reason I think that looks weird but there we go so I believe that is um, that is where we are at on um, on this on this video I showed you how to find images I showed you how to create textures an image texture and a procedural texture I showed you how to apply the texture to the object I showed you how to break out a section of the object to, to apply a separate texture. And then I showed you how to do image props. Hopefully this, um, this helps you out a little bit. Have a great time and a great day, and uh, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.